in at five, Van Death. This is quite a bizarre one that I'm honestly surprised I never heard of before. Supposedly in Korea there is a genuine fear of fan death. Now fan death is a well known belief in Korean culture where it is thought that if you have an electric fan running in a closed room with an unopened window you will quite literally die. Now of course there is no definitive evidence to support this strange claim yet it's still widely believed. Where this legend came from is unclear but fears of electric fans date back to their introduction to Korea with stories existing in the 20s and 30s, warning the risks of nausea, asphyxiation and facial paralysis to electric fans. Yeah, This is not a joke. Now you're probably asking yourself what the proposed cause of death actually are. Right? Well, first up is hypothermia, heat stress. Now, air movement will increase sweat evaporation, which cools the body, but in extreme heat, when the blown air is warmer than the body's temperature, it will increase the heat stress placed on the body and in turn causing heat exhaustion. Now the EPA aka the Environmental Protection Agency discourages people from using fans in closed rooms without ventilation, however they do approve of a fan if a window is open. Very strict fan rules here guys. Now the second proposed cause of death is asphyxiation. It is alleged that fans may cause asphyxiation by oxygen displacement and carbon dioxide intoxication. Honestly, I've spent my whole life using fans and I'm still here. I think. Anyway. I don't know. In at four, red surgical mask. As most know, plastic surgery is quite a big deal in Korean culture, as it is in America and the rest of the world, with the pursuit of perfection a thing that most strive towards. So this legend goes, I quote, a man is sitting in an empty subway car when a tall, thin woman walks in and sits in front of him. Her hair is dark and long, it covers most of her face, but he can see that she has a red surgical mask on. Thinking nothing of it, he leans back and watches the door close. The man notices her eyes and she catches him staring. He smiles at her. She asks the man, am I pretty? Taken aback, the man stammers, yes. She takes a mask off, revealing the rest of her face. There was a gash from ear to ear, her gums, teeth and ligaments showing. She screams at the man, am I pretty now? In terror, the man tries to get her as far away from the woman as possible. She takes out a scalpel and makes her way to him when the doors open and the man runs out. Now, this legend may sound familiar to a lot of you, and that's because it shares very similar roots to Slip Mouthed Woman, a malevolent figure from Japanese folklore who partially covers her face with a mask or object and carries some sort of sharp instrument. According to popular legend, she asks potential victims if they find her attractive. If they respond no, she will kill them with her weapon. However, if they say yes, she will reveal that the corners of her mouth are slipped from ear to ear. Now it's uncertain where the legend originated from, whether it was Japan or Korea, but regardless, it's straight up terrifying. Coming in at three, soul stealing dreams. Now this one is truly terrifying because not only does it involve your dreams, but also your dead family members. It's f the legend goes that dreaming of a dead loved one is a bad omen, especially near water. It is said that the dead family member will call you towards them and if you embrace them in your dream they will steal your soul away. Lovely. One particular story occurred on a Korean TV show where they would discuss hauntings and encounters with the paranormal. I quote, During one of the episodes they had a family on where they talk about how their grandmother had passed away. The man said that he dreamt that his grandmother was beckoning him over while she was waiting deep in water. For some reason he didn't go when he told his wife. His wife explained that going into the arms of a dead person in water no less was a sure sign that your soul was going to be stolen. The husband said he kept having the same dream and every time he was closer and closer to the grandmother until one day the family realized that they had kept something of hers. They paid respects to her once more and the dream stopped. Lesson number one, if you're from Korea do not hang on to any of your deceased family members belongings. They will literally steal your soul for it. Coming in at two, the virgin ghost. Stories of virginal ghosts are everywhere in Korea. They're often found in abandoned buildings, but more typically they're found in hospitals, schools, bathrooms, cemeteries and wooded areas. Just don't go to these places and you're cool I guess. Now these virgin ghosts 
almost always have long hair covering their faces and dressed in white garbs. This is due to the fact that tradition stated that single women should always wear their hair up and the white garb is usually worn during death. In Confucian Korean tradition, it was a woman's role to serve her father, husband and sons. If she died before being able to fulfill this goal, she would be cursed to walk the earth for eternity. Now legend goes that when you are in the presence of a virgin ghost, you will know it. This is because you will feel a sudden change in temperature, perhaps a sudden chill, and the wind will often change direction. One story goes that, I quote, a man was living on the topmost floor of the apartment building. One late night, he heard someone knocking on his door. He did not find anyone at the door, but he heard a voice telling him to count to 100 with his eyes closed and without making any noise. He started counting but got curious at 49. He opened his eyes and found a virgin ghost staring at him. It is said that virgin ghosts are most likely to be found in abandoned buildings. They are dressed in white and have long hair. Very spooky indeed. And finally, in at number one, the haunted bathroom. Now, for some very strange reason, Koreans have a lot, and I mean a lot, of stories about haunted schools, particularly haunted school bathrooms. Yeah, it's unsettling. But to be fair, Korean schools are definitely eerie. What with their dark stairwells and long hallways, they seem to be never ending. And of course, the creepy, oftentimes half lit fluorescent lights enter Korean school bathrooms, which in pop culture are often depicted as decrepit, old, crumbling, and all Always dark. Now, legend has it that one of these stalls in these bathrooms, particularly the stall located towards the back, is where a girl killed herself and supposedly now haunts it. Students whisper that the toilet flushes by itself and that the door will close with no wind around. Rumour has it that if you're alone in the bathroom, you can hear the crying. Some also state that you can often see her watching you from inside the mirror. Another legend from a similar vein talks of a ghost that emerges from the toilet and asks you if you will use red or blue toilet paper. Honestly, neither. We all use white, right? If you choose red, the ghost will cut you open. If you choose blue, the ghost will choke you to death leaving your body blue from suffocation. So lose, lose, no matter what. Number five, we've got the Pied Piper. We all know the legend of the Pied Piper at this point. This legend slash fairy tale dates way back and has different regional variations. Some say that the flautist drew snakes away from a town, others say it was rats. In various versions of the stories, Mr. Pied Piper can be portrayed as generous, greedy, benevolent, or evil. It's all up to the storyteller. However, in Transylvania's version, he was a terrifying hypnotist. See, at some point, there was an abundance of rats in a small German town. The townsfolk didn't know what to do until the Pied Piper showed up. Using his bewitching tunes, he paraded the rats out of town, never to return. He came back to the village, expecting to be lauded as a hero and paid a sum of money, and neither of these things happened. He did his very best to convince the townsfolk that his services were worth their weight in gold, but they never did pay him. This made him quite upset. Leaving the town, he came up with a horrible revenge scheme. The next week, he returned, musical instrument in hand. This time, the goal was not rats or other pests. No, he wanted to lure away the town's children. And so he did, playing a new hypnotizing song that tugged at the hearts and minds of all the kids around. He once again paraded out of town, but this time with their future in tow. By the time all the adults realized what had happened, it was too late. What did the Pied Piper do with these children? Well, there are different theories. A particularly grim idea is that he led them all right off a cliff, like human lemmings. Yikes. Another less terrible one that'll link us to Transylvania is that he led them to a cave in the region and sealed it up. Eventually, the kids did escape and they settled in the Romanian countryside. Some say that's why you can find plenty of blonde haired, blue eyed German speakers in the area. Coming in at number four, we've got the Liar's Bridge. Oh, you're all in trouble. I see you down in the comments posting first like 10 comments deep and claiming that you don't like my shirts. I know fraud when I see it. Nobody better try to cross that bridge unless you're down to die. Okay, I'll elaborate. There's a bridge in Sibiu that has quite the reputation. It's said that anyone who lies while crossing it will cause it to collapse. That is serious. This legend has become so popular that many brides-to-be are required to declare their love and purity while crossing it. And if they're being dishonest, well, of course, there's no way that the bridge would still be standing if this were really the case, as people love to lie. However, some have a less dramatic tale to tell, that the bridge will make certain noises upon the delivery of a lie, which could have something to it. The origins of the lying bridge are up in the air, but there are a few different explanations. Some claim that lying or adulterous spouses and fiancés would be tossed off the bridge if their impropriety was discovered. This would definitely explain the modern practices associated with the bridge. Others say that merchants who cheated their customers would be 
met with the same fate. Overcharge or sell something under false pretenses and take a dip. It could also originate with tales of cadets coming to town, wooing local lasses, promising them the world, and then disappearing forever. I would say that all these scenarios could result in a bridge famous for ending liars. Would you be willing to take a stroll across the footpath? Coming in at number three, we've got Bao Bao. It really does seem that every culture has their own version of the boogeyman. I suppose parents got really fed up with their young children, eh? Something we can all relate to. Bao Bao is exactly that, a Romanian boogeyman. However, I find this figure to be even scarier than lots of the other children snatchers. See, the Bao Bao stays in the same home as the kids. This cloaked figure is believed to appear whenever children misbehave and is always waiting for his chance from a hiding place somewhere in the house. Sometimes it's the broom closet, other times it's the storeroom. Either way, I bet this knowledge scared the daylights out of a bunch of Transylvanian kids. Imagine playing around and coming face to face with the door concealing a mysterious man who will take you away for acting up. With this knowledge, I bet kids were actually quite well behaved. Behaved. Unlike boogeymen in other cultures, the kidnappings also only last for a little while. The Bao Bao will grab disobedient kids and hold on to them for a year. So you don't immediately get turned into soup or drowned in a river, but instead you have to live with this terrifying man for 365 give or take. No friends, no family, no good food, just hard work and a scary supervisor. If anyone did get taken away, it probably scarred them for life. After the year, they get returned home and I'm sure their lives are never the same. Coming in at number two, we've got the Ghosts of Teleki Mansion. Here we go, some real Transylvanian ghost stories. The region is known for its beautiful architecture and castles, so there's no surprise that all sorts of ghastly tales are attached to the ornate buildings. Unfortunately, Dracula's castle is Bram Stoker's invention and doesn't really exist. But there are plenty more spooky facades from where that came from. One such tale originates in the Teleki Mansion. This rundown and abandoned building was once an extravagant abode, but these days most locals do their best to avoid it. It's actually relatively close to the university town of Cluj-Napoca, in a smaller town called Okna Mures. Legend says this mansion is haunted by the drunken ghosts of soldiers. During the Second World War, a squad of soldiers broke into the mansion. They'd heard that there was plenty of good wine in the cellars and decided it would be a good night to imbibe. After Locating the gigantic barrels, they had themselves a grand old time. As soldiers tend to do when given downtime with lots of alcohol, they got drunk. A little too drunk, probably. I say this because they ended up goofing around with their guns and firing them inside of the mansion. After causing a mess and a half, one unlucky marksman hit an unintended target. His bullet pierced one of the gigantic barrels, which started to flood the cellar. In all likelihood, a couple of barrels were probably punctured. Gallons and gallons of wine rushed into the underground room, drowning the soldiers before they could escape. I suppose that's as good a way to go as any, drowning in wine. Although I think the soldiers might have enjoyed it a little bit more uh, if it was in their bellies rather than their lungs. And finally, at number one, we've got people eating lakes. Sorry to all you Great Lakes swimmers out there, the Transylvanian bodies of water tend to be a little more aggressive than others. Of course, they don't actually eat people, but they drown enough experienced swimmers that folks started to claim that they had an appetite. One such lake is Lake Vindrel, which is known for devouring even the most skillful of swimmers. Remember folks, don't eat before going swimming, always have a buddy, and try to avoid voracious waterways. If the disappearances of swimmers wasn't enough, locals have also been known to find bloody chunks of people floating around. That doesn't usually happen when somebody drowns, right? Another lake famous for consuming is Lezer Lake. Apparently this oversized puddle once drowned an entire town. Something gave way, causing the lake to flood in and envelop everything. Neighboring towns thought the church was celebrating something based on all the noise the bells were making, but nope, the bells were ringing because the church was literally descending under the water. So yeah, you better watch your back around those Transylvanian lakes. They'll grab you before you can say backstroke. Does that change anyone's travel aspirations? Probably not. The spooky mysteries are a big draw for a lot of folks visiting Romania. Just don't go looking for Dracula's castle, eh? In at five, the witch girl, a pilot's knob. Now this legend comes to us from Marion, Kentucky, where a young girl is said to be buried in a concrete grave. Back in 1916, a woman named Mary Louise Ford and her five-year-old daughter, Mary Ellen Ford, were living in Pilot's Knob. The mother and daughter were accused of being witches, and instead of waiting for the trial, the frightened villagers dragged the mother and daughter out of the house and burned them alive at the stake. Classic witch business. They then buried the mother's body in a different location, and to avoid the young girl coming back from the dead and seeking revenge, the fearful villagers made sure to take precautions. They buried the daughter in pilot snob in a steel reinforced coffin, and then after lowering it into the grave, they filled it with concrete. Following that, they put gravel on top and built a metal fence all around the gravesite. 
Yeah, they were pretty damn scared. According to legend, the young girl's ghost paces back and forth behind the fence, searching for her mother who was buried somewhere else. Yet she cannot escape the confines of the fence. Many locals have even reported seeing tiny child's footprints in the gravel over her grave. And some believe that if you visit the girl's grave alone and get too close, her hands will come up and grab a hold of you and drag you down into the concrete. Folks who have reported to see her go say that she wears a white dress that is scorched at the bottom and her long blonde hair smolders at the ends. In at 4 The Hanging Man of Allendale Train Tunnel The Allendale Train Tunnel is located south of Cincinnati in the woods behind the Allendale Trailer Park in Ellesmere, Kentucky. Now legend goes that some years ago a man hung himself from a hook that is set above the tunnel entrance. The man's ghost is said to walk the tunnel or even appear hanging from the hook. Not only that, but there are also reports of disembodied voices as well as screams coming from inside the tunnel. Now for those seeking to locate the tunnel, there has been some confusion simply because it's known as a train tunnel yet no trains run through it. It's actually a tunnel for the stream that runs under the tracks. In order to reach it, you must enter the woods, travel down a hill and follow the stream to reach the tunnel, which is now heavily graffitied and littered. Although in urban legend, one element rings true, there is a hook Hook above the entrance to the tunnel, the clear indicator that you're in the right place. Enjoy. In at 3, The Witch's Tree On 6th Street and Park Ave in Louisville, Kentucky, you will find what can only be described as a natural monstrosity. A knotted tree, so misshapen and tortured that it could easily serve as a portal to hell. Now even if the tree itself didn't catch your attention, the trinkets, baubles and bead necklaces hanging from the branches certainly would. They are items that have been placed by the Louisville locals to appease the vengeful witches. To appease the vengeful witches. Now the legend of the bizarre tree begins in the late 19th century where it was supposedly the gathering place for a coven of witches where they would perform their ceremonies. All was well until a city planning committee decided to remove the tree ahead of the annual May Day celebration. This of course displeased the witches greatly, so much so that they cast a curse. Exactly 11 months to the day after the tree was cut down, the city suffered a storm so severe it was assumed by locals that the witches had made good on their curse and summoned a storm demon. Now during this horrendous storm, lightning struck the stump of the old witch's tree and suddenly a new tree began to grow. However, it was not a healthy tree but rather twisted and otherworldly. Now whether these stories are true or not, the locals of Louisville believe this tree houses something dark and sinister and to this day continue to adorn it with baubles and trinkets. In it too, the headless woman of Iroquois Park. Iroquois Park is a 739 acre park in Louisville, Kentucky, designed by Frederick Law Cherokee and Shawnee Parks. It is a serene and picturesque park with an old growth forest and viewpoint atop the hill. However, as you wander through the forest and the winding trails on a warm night, you may begin to hear the sound of a dog barking wildly. Following that, a thick fog will roll in, partially obstructing your vision. Then, you will smell the stench of smoke and fire begin to rise in the air. The fog will break, but just for a moment, and then you'll see a figure begin to approach. Now accounts vary, but some state that a woman will appear dressed in early 1800 settlement clothes and, as she walks through the park, you can see her very clearly holding her head in her hands as blood drips from her severed neck. The legend has been passed down from generation to generation, with each new storyteller making it much more gruesome. For those looking for a thrill, it is said that the headless woman is regularly seen close to the lookout point, with some suspecting that she is the ghost of a farmer's wife who settled with her husband in the area where the park is now located. The story goes that one night while her husband was downtown on business, an Indian tribe attempted to sneak up on the homestead and ransack it. The intruders grabbed the woman and beheaded her before promptly setting fire to the home. Now whether you believe this is that very same woman is up to you, but regardless there have been far too many accounts of park goers seeing the headless woman for it to be simply legend. And finally coming in at number 1, the Pope Lick Monster. The Pope Lick Monster is said to be a part man, part goat and part sheep creature reported to live beneath a railroad trestle bridge over Pope Lick Creek in the Fisherville neighborhood of Louisville, Kentucky. Now numerous urban legends exist about the creature and its origins with some accounts claiming that the creature uses hypnosis or voice mimicry to lure trespassers onto the trestle in order to kill them. However, other accounts claim that the creature jumps down from the trestle onto the roofs of cars passing beneath it. No matter what 
the story the creature is so unsettling to those who see it that they are driven to leap off of the trestle. Its origins vary but some reports state that the human goat hybrid was a circus freak who vowed revenge after being mistreated. In another version the monster escaped from a train that was derailed on the trestle. And the final rumour is that the creature is really the twisted reincarnated form of a farmer who sacrificed goats in exchange for satanic powers. No matter which way you spin it this creature is horrifying and is said to be behind a number of deaths and accidents at the trestle since its initial construction, despite the now looming 8 foot fence built to keep thrill seekers out. In at 5 The Collector The Collector is a really catch all legend for creepy hermetic neighbours that might be doing something strange in their basements. However the most common legend is that of the neighbour who collects human body parts and proudly displays them in mason jars around their home. However this legend has some real world roots, unlike the rest of our list. Back in 2011 Russian police arrested a man described by the media as a cemetery collector for digging up 29 corpses and dressing the remains in female clothing to display around his home. This is an absolutely horrifying legend that became even more sickening after this event came to large. You may never know who your neighbour is or what they're doing after hours. Just don't go to their basement if they invite you inside. In at 4 The Black Bird of Chernobyl Now this legend garnered traction on the internet of course and focuses on a creature that is allegedly seen in Ukraine around the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, specifically in the weeks leading up to the disaster on April 26, 1986. Now its description is very similar to that of the Mothman and is humanoid in appearance and was presumed to have been black or dark grey in colour. It was also claimed by witnesses that it possessed wings and glowing red eyes. The black bird was spotted by several workers before they passed away, with some theorising that the bird was serving as an omen of doom, warning the workers of the lethal radiation within the plant. Not only that, some of the survivors shortly before the nuclear meltdown began to experience weird goings on, including nightmares, threatening phone calls and encounters with the winged beast. Following the disaster and as the Soviet helicopters arrived, circling the smouldering plant, dropping Clay, sand, lead, and other extinguishing chemicals on top of the flame. Some of the workers claim to have witnessed a 20 foot bird gliding through the undulating tentacles of irradiated smoke, which was spewing from the reactor. Frightening. In at 3 The Curse of the Ivan Vasily Ivan Vasily is perhaps one of the most terrifying and shocking urban legends that is actually true and exists in the Russian history books. Now the ship was built in 1897 as a transport freight across the Baltic Sea to the Gulf of Finland and driven by a single triple expansion steam engine. The ship was reliable, stable and nothing unusual happened for the first 5 years it was on the sea. Then one night changed everything. In 1903 the Russian government was preparing for war with Japan. So the freighter's role changed drastically overnight and the ship was ordered to carry cargo of war materials to Russian warships. The ship was first sent to the west coast of Africa to get coal and after they stocked up, the crew noticed a change on the ship, something wasn't quite right. However they continued and set sail across the Indian Ocean. Now the uneasiness that the crew was feeling was as if there was an invisible entity on the ship, as if someone was watching them and the atmosphere just felt wrong or negative. The crew were visibly scared, then one night a man on the ship saw an apparition, a ghostly figure that was glowing with an odd mist walking across the deck before disappearing behind a lifeboat. Of course the sightings only made things worse for the crew who were now on high alert. Just a few nights Nights later, another crew member let out a terrifying scream, sending everyone into a panic. Then men went crazy and began to fight each other until one of them jumped into the ocean to his death. The crew had absolutely no idea what they were doing. A couple nights later, the crew just out of nowhere started to fight yet again, and another man jumped overboard to his death. The crew felt like they were being possessed by an unseen force. Once the ship finally docked, most of the crew abandoned the ship, and new crew were hired to handle the cargo. While out on the seas, the same thing began to happen, resulting in two people dying on the journey, including the captain, who flung himself overboard. This went on for some time until the crew finally realised the only way to deal with it was to burn the ship down. The sailors gathered in tugboats and watched on as the ship went down in flames. Coming in at number 2 The Well to Hell The Well to Hell is a legend about a putative borehole in Russia which was reportedly drilled so deep that it broke through to hell itself. The legend holds that a team of Russian engineers in an unnamed place in Siberia had drilled a hole that was 14.4 kilometers deep 
before breaking through to a cavity. The researchers were of course intrigued by the discovery and lowered an extremely heat tolerant microphone into the well. The temperature was reportedly 1832 Fahrenheit and the chamber was filled with flames. Screams began to be picked up on the microphone, tormented screams that were begging for help. However, the recording was later found to be looped together from various sound effects. Now, in reality, the Soviet Union had drilled a hole more than 12 kilometers deep in the Kola Super Deep Borehole, located not in Siberia but on the Kola Peninsula. Upon reaching the depths of 12,262 meters in 1989, interesting geological anomalies were found, but nothing supernatural and definitely not the well to hell. And finally, coming in at number one, the Russian sleep experiment. This is perhaps one of the greatest urban legends of not just Russia but of all time. It's simply known as the Russian sleep experiment, and according to the legend, researchers in the 1940s took five prison inmates and locked them in an airtight chamber with a special gas to keep them awake. This was so they could see the effects of prolonged sleep deprivation and promised the subjects their freedom if they could go 30 days without sleep. The results were, of course, absolutely horrific. On the fifth day, paranoia began to set in and the prisoners stopped talking to each other. On the ninth day, a few of them began screaming relentlessly while others tore apart the books they were given, smeared them with feces and blocked off the one way mirror so they couldn't be seen. Then out of nowhere, the screaming stopped. Three days went by without sound from inside the chamber. The researchers tried to address them via the intercom, stating that they were coming in and for the prisoners to lie flat on the floor. Then one of the voices answered. We no longer want to be freed. After 15 days, the researchers finally opened the door, and the sight was apparently horrific. One of the prisoners was dead and completely torn to shreds, with chunks of him stuffed into the floor drain. The other four prisoners had mutilated themselves to the brink of death and were terrified at the thought of going to sleep and begged to stay inside the chamber. They were forcibly removed, and when surgeons tried to fix the damage they had inflicted on themselves, they resisted so strongly that they couldn't be sedated. They laughed as they were sewn back together, fully awake and aware. Eventually, after enough demanding, they were returned back to the chamber, after the head researcher told his team to lock them back in. However, one member of the team resisted, shot the head researcher, and then shot one of the two remaining prisoners. Before killing the last prisoner, he asked just one thing, what are you? The prisoner responded, have you forgotten so easily? We are you. We are the madness that lurks within you all, begging to be free every moment in your deepest animal mind. We are what you hide from in your beds every night. We are what you sedate into silence and paralysis when you go to the nocturnal haven where we cannot tread. After this, the researchers shot the prisoner in the heart. 